Okay, class, let's finish up assignment three. Um, this time we're going to start on page 39 with the family of little feet. There was a family. All were little. Their arms were little and their hands were little and their height was not tall and their feet very small. The grandpa sat on the living slept on the living room couch and snored through his teeth. His feet were fat and doughy like thick tamales and those and these he powdered and stuffed into white socks and brown leather shoes. The, the grandma's feet were lovely as pink pearls and dressed in velvety high heels and, and made her walk with a wobble, but she wore them anyways because they were pretty. The baby's feet had 10 tiny toes, pale and see-through like a salamander's, and these he popped into his mouth whenever he was hungry. The mother's feet, plump and polite, descended like white pigeons from the sea of pillow across the linoleum roses, down, down, down the wooden stairs, over the chalk hopscotch squares, five, six, seven, blue sky. Do you want this? And gave us a paper bag with one pair of lemon shoes and one red and one pair of dancing shoes that used to be white, but were now pale blue here. And we said, thank you, and waited until she went upstairs. Hooray, today we are Cinderella because our feet fit exactly. And we laugh at Rachel's one foot with the girl's gray sock and the lady's high heel. Do you like these shoes? But the truth is, it is scary to look down at your feet that are no longer yours and see attached a long, long leg. Everybody wants to trade the lemon shoes for red shoes, the red for the pair that were once white but are now pale blue, the pale blue for the lemon and take them off and put them back on and keep on like this is a long time until we're tired. Then Lucy screams to take our socks off. And yes, it's true. We have legs, skinny and spotted with satin scars with scabs were picked, but legs all our own. Good to look at and long. It's Rachel who learns to walk the best, all strutted in those magic high heels. She teaches us to cross and uncross our legs and to run like a double Dutch rope and how to walk down to the corner so that the shoes talk back to you with every step. Lucy, Rachel, me, teetottering like so, down to the corner where the men can't take their eyes off us. We must be Christmas. Mr. Benny at the corner grocery puts down his important cigar. Your mother knows you've got shoes like that. Who give you those? Nobody. Them are dangerous, he said. You girls too young to be wearing shoes like that. Take those shoes off before I call the cops. But we just run. On the avenue, a boy on a homemade bicycle calls out, Ladies, lead me to heaven. But there is nobody around but us. Do you like these shoes? Rachel said yes, and Lucy says yes, and yes, I say, these are the best shoes. We will never go back to wearing the other kind again. Do you like these shoes? In front of the laundromat, six girls with the same fat face pretend we are invisible. They are the cousins, Lucy said, and always jealous. We just keep strutting. Across the street from the front of the tavern, a bum man on the stoop. Do you like these shoes? Bum man says. 
Yes, little girl, your little lemon shoes are so beautiful, but come closer. I can't see very well. Come closer, please. You're a pretty girl, Bum Bum continues. What's your name, pretty girl? And Rachel says, Rachel, just like that. Now, you know, to talk to drunks is crazy and to tell them your name is worse, but who can blame her? She is young and dizzy to hear so many sweet things in one day, even if it is a bum's man's whiskey word saying them. Rachel, you're prettier than a yellow taxi cab. You know that. But we don't like it. We got to go, Lucy says. If I give you a dollar, will you kiss me? How about a dollar? I'll give you a dollar. And he looks into his pocket for wrinkled money. We have to go right now, Lucy says, taking Rachel's hand because she looks like she's thinking about that dollar. Bum Man is yelling something to the air, but by now we're running fast and far away, our high heel shoes taking us all the way down the avenue and around the block, past the ugly cousins, past Mr. Benny's, up Mango Street, uh, the back way, just in case. We are tired of being beautiful. Lucy hides the lemon shoes and the red shoes and the shoes that used to be white but are now pale blue under the powdered bushel basket on the back porch. Until one Tuesday, her mother, who is very clean, throws them away. But no one complains. Page 43, a rice sandwich. The special kids, the ones who wear keys around their necks get to eat in the canteen. The canteen. Even the name sounds important. And these kids at lunchtime go there because their mothers aren't home or home to cook far away to get to. My home isn't far, but it's not close either. And somehow I got it in my head one day to ask my mother to make me a sandwich and write a note to the principal so I could eat in the canteen, too. Oh, no, she says, pointing the butter knife at me as if I'm starting trouble. No, sir. Next thing you know, everybody will be wanting a bag lunch. I'll be up all night cutting bread into little triangles. This one with mayonnaise, this one with mustard. No pickles on mine. But mustard on my on one side, please. You kids like to invent more work for me. But Nanny says she doesn't want to eat at school either because she likes to go home with her best friend Gloria, who lives across the schoolyard. Gloria's mama has a big color TV, and all they do is watch cartoons. Kiki and Carlos, on the other hand, are patrol boys. They don't want to eat at school either. They like to stand out in the cold, especially if it's raining. They think suffering is good for you ever since they saw the movie 300 Spartans. I'm no Spartan and hold up an anemic wrist to prove it. I can't even blow up a balloon without getting dizzy. And besides, I know how to make my own lunch. If I ate at school, there'd be less dishes to wash. You would see me less and less and like me better. Every day at noon, my chair would be empty. Where is my favorite daughter, you would cry. And when I came home finally at 3 p.m., you would appreciate me. Okay, okay, my mother says after three days of this. And the following morning, I get to go to school with my mother's letter and a rice sandwich, sandwich because we don't have an, any lunch meat. Monday or Fridays, it doesn't matter. Mornings always go by slow, and this day especially. But lunchtime came finally, and I got to get in line with the stay-at-school kids. Everything is fine until the nun, who knows all the canteen kids by heart, looks at me and says, You! Who sent you here? And since I'm shy, I don't say anything, 
just hold out my hand with the letter. This is no good, she says, till Sister Superior gives the okay. Go upstairs and see her. And so I went. I had to wait for two kids in front of me to get hollered at. One, because he did something in class. The other, because he didn't. My turn came, and I stood in front of the big desk with holy pictures under the glass while Sister Superior read my letter. It went like this. Dear Sister Superior, please let Esperanza eat in the lunchroom because she lives too far away and she gets tired. As you can see, she is very skinny. I hope to God she does not faint. Thank you, Mrs. E. Cordero. You don't live far, she says. You live across the boulevard. That's only four blocks, not even. Three, maybe. Three long blocks away from here. I bet I can see your house from my window. Which one? Come here. Which one is your house? And then she made me stand up on a box of books and point. That one, she said, pointing to the row of ugly three flats, the ones even the raggedy men are ashamed to go into. Yes, I nodded, even though I knew that wasn't my house, and started to cry. I always cry when nuns yell at me, even if they're not yelling. Then she was sorry and said, I could stay just for today, not tomorrow or the day after you go home. And I said, yes, and could I please have a Kleenex? I had to blow my nose. In the canteen, which was nothing special, lots of boys and girls watched while I cried and ate my sandwich. The bread already greasy, the rice cold.